Come on, let's give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today. We sprinkle the blood of Jesus Christ in this place. We ask that your precious will will be done tonight. Mighty God, we pray that you will have your way in this service, in the music. We thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And the people say, Amen. Come on, let's give big praise.
everything off my slate. Just give me you. I hope I'm not too late. I'm gonna rest. Say, Lord, give me you. Say, Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you.
named Dubai. Amen? You're going to see that here. They're going to be rivers very soon. So I saw CBC News had this thing, everybody's mesmerized. That is the judgment for this place. Barbados need a waking up. And it's about time you get a waking up. It's about time. Listen, I'm, going, I'm, I'm coming down, and while I'm coming down, I'm hearing people went to the bank to get money to, to cricket. You heard that? And I'm coming down, and I heard the news. They already paid a ticket. Not only this, maybe tonight is there, here in the community. Hundreds of people, or people that should be praying for Barbados with their back out, yeah. including the community. Barbados have become a place where God does not exist anymore here. Yeah? When you ask people to come to church, they tell you, to church? Church? Are you coming to church? Yeah. And people want God as a genie. You all know what I said? Yes. I said people want God as a genie. That means when everything, he just appeared with, with uh, uh, Aladdin. And she, they want God as a, as a Aladdin and he just appeared, he do things for you. We are to seek the hands of God, the face of God, not the hands of God. You all hear me? And you better serve him right. This is the time for the judgment of the Caribbean. You think God just said that in the sky? Um, so while I was at home, Maria come and tell me there were so many people up there. There were so much people looking at the sky where I live in Christchurch. There were so many people in the sky. I said, well, I know what that is. It was pe people were taking pictures. But I want to let you know Jesus Christ will come back when you will look up. You will look up in the sky, and if you are ready, you will be down here. In, in, down here. It is time for us to get ready for the coming of the Lord. Amen? I said it is time for us to get what? For the coming of the Lord. And stop playing. This country has gone. On Sundays, when I'm coming to church, all people run riding bicycle on the road and they want you to lift them down and the police will come. You realize that? They drive in the middle of the road. You wanna know what type of country is it? They drive in the middle of the road. I thought there is a little space for the bicycle to run. In the middle of the road. You wanna continue to say boop, 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 boop. I was gonna tell Tiffany, lift down one because I, I don't understand. I don't understand why they in the road and you need to cut cross. What's going on about this place? <laughs> I want you to understand where we are today. But the body don't know about God. They don't know what God. They don't want nothing to do with God. Okay? God is far from their mind. So when I was coming down and I was listening to so many people that buy tickets already for cricket. I say, uh-huh. Down there may be very well submerged with water. God is joking. And it's time for us to stop playing with God. Amen? Amen. This country got far from God. This country is not a Christian nation anymore. And it's time for us to get ready. At this time, I want you to go home and tell somebody I love you. And people don't love people no more, you know. You know what I say, right? We, I never knew Reverend um, Prophet was in that they had hit men in Barbados. <laughs> Look, but I didn't know they had hit men and that happened in your village. Look, how you can keep that from the public? But I didn't know they had hit men there. The man hired him not to kill his wife. That was from ever since, and they now bring it out. Well, I think I think I'm gonna have to get some bodyguard if they go hit men here. <laughs> All right, let's greet one another. Thank <laughs> you.
Warn your children. Why? Because Satan is after our children. Satan is after our children, and I want you to warn them. Even if whatever your children want to do, if they are in the music industry, warn them. When I see what is going on in America and the music industry, it's a nasty business. Okay? It's a very nasty business, and we have to warn our children. Uh, warn our children, even some teachers, be very careful. Even teachers, they are placed in school sometimes. When I was much more younger, I knew a girl that a teacher used to sleep with her in Bible school at the time she was 14 years old. You all hear what I said? In schools, warn your children, advise. Don't look at me, you don't know very well what I'm talking about. Yes. I knew a, a girl that went to Springer, and a teacher there was sleeping with her from the time she went in school until she left school. You gotta warn your children, every teacher is not good. And you gotta be there for your children. You all heard me? And those people don't get locked up. You hear me? And your boys, take, um, ask your boys questions. I am privileged to know a lot of things. Ask your boys questions and make sure that nobody interferes with them, right? You all heard me, right? And they, they, they got people to be in church too. Hey, okay? Everybody that comes to church does mean that they are, they are people in church, okay? You all hear me? I want us to stand. Welcome, Prophet Wazim, to the podium. Good night, church. Good night to you who are viewing online. I just want you to raise your hand in the presence of the Lord. Heavenly Father, tonight as we bow our heads and our hearts in your presence, say, God, be ask for your assistance, Lord. We thank you for our help from the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that you would guide and direct this message, dear God. Prepare the hearts of those who are listening so that they will receive this word. Lord, I pray it will be food for them, dear God. Father, tonight I'm your messenger, boy. Use me for your honor and your glory. Give me the right words to say, dear God. Let them be effective. Let them touch the heart of your people, dear God. I thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do, Lord. Even now, I must increase so that you can increase in my life, Lord. And I thank you for doing it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Good night, uh, church. I wanted to turn with me to Exodus, the 10th chapter. And I'm going to read from verse 21 to 26. The 10th chapter of Exodus. I'm reading from the NIV, but of course, you can follow with me in your King James Version or whatever version you have. Exodus 10 21. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand towards the sky so that darkness spreads over Egypt, darkness that can be felt. 
So Moses stretched over his hand towards the sky, and total darkness covered Egypt for three days. No one could see anything, could see anyone else, or move about for three days. Yet, the Israelites had light in the places where they lived. I right, like the scripture, right? Hi. Because I understand that there was a darkness that was not an ordinary darkness. The word is telling me that this darkness was such that the light, a candle or anything that the Egyptians had could not illuminate that place. That darkness was a darkness that could be felt. But in the camp of the Israelites, they had light in places where they lived. Then the Pharaoh summoned Moses and said, Go worship the Lord. Even your women and children may go with you. Only leave your livestock and herd behind. But Moses said, You must allow us to sacrifice burnt offerings to present to the Lord our God. Our livestock too must go with us. Not a hoof is to be left behind. I like this scripture. Because there are some serious fighting words here. So Moses is telling him, not one hoof is to be left behind. We have to use some of them in worship to the Lord our God. And until we get there, we will not know what we are to use to worship God. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he was not willing to let them go. Pharaoh said to Moses, Go out of my sight. Make sure you do not appear before me again. The day you see my face, you will die. Just as you say, Moses replied, I will never appear before you again. Mm. I like this scripture. I like this scripture, and I want to use for a topic tonight that God wants to deliver you. Totally. I want to say that again, God wants to deliver you totally. God wants us all to have total deliverance. And when I'm talking about total deliverance, I would, God wants that every aspect of our body, that there's no part of Satan that still has a hold of us. The enemy came to Moses and maybe look at Pharaoh, we can see it's, it's as though Satan is talking. It has the, the hiss of the serpent upon what he's saying. He has, he's a, a man that has the, the, the Israelites in bondage. And God sent a message through Moses to tell him, let my people go. Tonight that message is still the same. We have an adversary. Satan wants to bind you. Satan wants to put you under oppression. And God is saying tonight, let my people go. Uh, there's so many people that are oppressed and so many people that are bound. But God is saying to us tonight that he wants us to have total deliverance. The enemy came and he made a deal with Satan. And he said, oh, you can go and you can worship, but leave the animals behind. You see, he was slick, he was smooth, because he didn't want them to worship. I hear the time tonight that we're going to worship in here nothing. We're going to worship in. I don't know about you, but it's something I have to give to God. I have to give him my worship. I'm so empty and I'm so hollow about my worship. But when I get down on my knees and I start to worship God, I feel the connection. I feel him working on my behalf. I feel my purpose. I don't know about you. You see, he was slick and he was smooth, and he was telling them, or you can leave the animals behind. And Satan comes to make that deal to most of us. I'll give you this part, but leave this part for me. Ah, you can, you can go and worship. You can, you can see, think about it. You can say, you can go and worship. You can come back and still cuss with your neighbor. Oh, you can go to worship. You can really worship God, but leave the masturbation to me. He, that's how he operates. Or you can go and worship. You can worship. I still want you to hold on to somebody in your heart. Leave that part for me. But Moses told him, I'm not leaving a the hope. There must be a total separation between me and you. There must be a total separation between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. There must be a total separation between what God requires. A 
want something to ask for. I don't know about you, but I cannot leave a hope behind. I cannot accept you to have anything that belongs to God. Any part of my worship, anything that is dedicated to God, you cannot have part of. God wants us to speak boldly. God wants us to make a separation. God wants us to, to, to stand on his promises and stand on his principles. God wants you to have total deliverance. God wants to deliver your family totally. I want to say that again. God wants you to deliver your family. God wants to deliver your family totally. I saw our sister Nadia and, and, and the, the whole, all her relatives. God wants all of them to be free to worship. God wants my whole family to be free, my lineage, my generation to be free to worship him. You may not know, as God was speaking to me, I had to write down certain things. You may not know what your deliverance can cause others, can cause others to be delivered. I want to say that again. Your deliverance can cause others to be delivered. Let's go back to uh, uh, Exodus 3, 7 to 10. God said, I have seen the misery, the crime of the Israelites. And I've come down to deliver them. I'm going to take them to a spacious land. I'm going to give them to a land full with milk and honey, the horn of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Parasites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now they're crying. Some of us may be going through a period of crying. Some of us may be going through a period of sorrow. I'm here to tell you that God sees and he knows the suffering. He knows what you've been through. The enemy will make you feel that the enemy, that, that, that God is not aware of what you're going through. He may make you feel that, 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 that you're going through this thing you will never come out. I want to tell you something tonight that God has something good. In store for you. Amen. I start by saying that Pharaoh represented Satan. Let's go to Ezekiel 29, verse 1 to 6. We can start even at verse 2. Son of man, set your face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him. And against all Egypt, speak to him and say, This is what the sovereign Lord said. I'm against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, you great monster, you great serpent. Lying in your stream, you say that now belongs to me. I have made it myself. That's the language of the enemy. Oh, I belong. I own this. I own this person. I own this. Uh, they will never get over this situation. They belong to me. But I will put a hook in your jaw. I will make the fish of your stream stick to you, to your skills. I will pull you out from among your streams with all your fish sticking on your skills. When I read this, I understand that this is exactly how the enemy operates. He's lying low, he's in a uh, stream, and he has some little fish that are attacked to him. I don't know about you, but sometimes in your workplace, uh, you can see that there are people that the enemy used that oppress you. There may be people that God, uh, that in, in your home, that the enemy will try to use uh, to try to rob you the wrong way. But God is saying, I'm going to put a hook in this serpent's mouth. I'm going to give you total deliverance. This serpent, this monster that has been oppressing you, I am able, I'm more than able to do it for you. Oh, sometimes the serpent, the old monster, thinks that he's in charge. But I'm here to deliver a message to him tonight. Oh, see, the God says that he's going to put a hook in your mouth. Oh, he's a stronger man tonight. And he says, I'm going to toss you up into the desert. I'm going to turn the tables on you. I'm going to turn the tables on you. I'm going to put you in a dry and desolate place. Then all who live in Egypt will know the man. Mm. You know how powerful our God is. Do you really know how powerful our God is? A lot of us go from place to place and we're not sure about who our God is. But Moses gets this word in Exodus 5, verse 1 and 2. 
God says, go to Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go. Go to Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go. He was obedient. But although, I want you to get this, although he was obedient, the situation went from bad to worse. Sometimes when we get a word from God, we think that automatically in our apostle touch on it, automatically things must swing around the next day. Sometimes we get a word from God and we think that, oh, because it, it, my situation had changed right away, God did not send this word. God spoke to Moses personally and told him, go and deliver this message to Pharaoh. The moment Pharaoh got the message, it was more hardship, more than it, more than they were intensive. Uh, the resources that they had, they, they had less resources. They were still expected to, to build, to, to make the same amount of blocks. They couldn't drop their quota. What am I saying to you tonight? God is speaking to us. Sometimes we get a message. The enemy will think that because something bad has happened in your life, that God is not fearing you. The enemy will want you to feel that because there's a setback, because the enemy attacks your finance, because he hit your car and found in all the tires and you have to replace the tires, that God is not with you. Or because your child went on drugs, that God is not with you. But I'm here to say you get a word. Oh, I dare you to stand on that word. I dare you to stand on the promises of God. I dare you to stand on what God says concerning you. But from bad to worse, less resources, harder labor, same quota, and then accusation. You know what Moses was accused? The overseer said, Moses, you went to Pharaoh. Pharaoh has come to me now and tell me, don't let the workload drop. And you have now caused Pharaoh to put a sword to my neck. If these people ever drop the amount of work that they're doing, it's going to be on my head and you cause it. If you've had accusations, I want you to put your hands together and just bless God. If somebody has you, you, you that, you cannot totally have deliverance unless there's accusation. Unless there's people accusing you for delivering the word of God, for standing on the word of God, and you have not been accused, you're in the wrong place. You better check yourself. But I'm telling you that once you want to stand on the word of God, you see, it's all right when you can tell people, oh, let's go to this party. Let's go to this wedding reception. And you can tell them all sorts of mushy stuff. But the moment you start to tell them about God, the moment you start to tell them about Jesus, 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 and what Jesus requires, I mean, the moment you start to tell them that you can't do this or you can't do that, you realize that the, 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 the whole thing, the whole dynamic of the whole thing changed. You're not welcome in that place anymore. But I thank God tonight for accusations because God wants to deliver us totally. It has to be a separation. It can't be a mix up and then that thing. We have to be distinct. We have to be a distinct people when we come to God. God told, let's go to Exodus 5, 22 and 23. Moses returned to the Lord. Why, Lord, have you brought trouble on the people? Is this why you sent me? Ever since I went to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has brought trouble on the people. Oh, man. All you have to be mindful of. Are you coming in God's name? You see, if you're coming in self, it will fall apart. But if you know that you're coming in God's name, if you know that you're a vessel of God, if you know that when you stand up and talk, you are representing God's kingdom, if you know that you come in God's name, you don't have to worry. I don't know, am, I, am, I, am I with someone tonight? Are you with me tonight? Let's go to Exodus 6, verse 1 and, one and 2. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. Because of my mighty hand, he will let them go. Because of my mighty hand, I will drive them out of this country. Hmm. 
Oh, who has an arm like our God? Oh, he has a mighty arm. He's powerful because of my might, because of what I'm able to do. He has to deliver. He does not have the final say concerning you. Let's look at the trickery of Satan. Let's go to Exodus 8, 25 to 27. So we know about the plagues. So we are down to the plague of the flies. Then Moses summoned, then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Go sacrifice to your God here in the land. But Moses said, That's not right. The sacrifice we offer the Lord will be detestable to the Egyptians. Hmm. Oh man, I don't know about you, but there are certain things that I do when I praise God that are so annoying to the enemy. They're so annoying to those that are wrong. Or oh, you ever get in your workplace and you say that, oh, hallelujah. And you visit the top of God, bless and highly favor two times. Uh, they get so upset. Uh, I don't know about you, but when I start to worship God, uh, there's some things that are so detestable. Uh, I don't know about you, but I go down on page. Uh, I do some awkward things. Uh, I do some funny things. Uh, I uh, put some on the wall at the top of my head. Uh, the place I get so ignorant. Uh, I never drink some on the wall. Uh, oh, my Lord, but I know that that's a Lord's wall. I know that everything that is in there that is not of him has to be rooted up in the testimony. I don't know if you have to see me in my spare time. They were not very awkward to you. Oh my Lord, it's a big character coming down my eyes. I look soon, I look stupid. I look like a real fool. People who don't know about God. But I'm here to tell you that it's infected and the spirit ran. I don't know about you, but it's so infected and detestable. Anytime that you're worshiping God and the world is singing, anytime that you're singing a song and the world can sing along with that song, something is wrong. You know, they had a song the other day. I hated it, I hated it, I hated it. Go easy on me, Father. That's the most demonic song that they ever wrote. A song that has been given over to Adam. Adam giving it over to the enemy. Go telling a lover, go easy on me. We took that same song and think that God, being God a company, go easy on me, Father. That God has to disappear you even when you are doing sin. No, 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 no. You got it wrong. You got it wrong. You know, you gotta to come to God with fear and trembling. You only need to understand that sin is sin. And we serve a holy God. Anytime that you come and you sing the same song that the world is singing, oh, I know it can't work. Anytime that you're in the world and you you're shooting up with a mind and coming up on it, the altar, and you can worship God. There's no effect. So he says to them, go sacrifice to God. You can sacrifice God by here in the same place. Oh. Oh, why do you want to go so far? But I'm here to tell you tonight that I want to be go, I want to go as far as possible from the things of Satan. I don't know about you, but I can't be I can't be mixed up and I can't be blending up with the same things that the world has, the same things that Satan has to offer. He's saying to, he's basically saying you can worship and sleep with Tom in heaven. Yes, you can right. worship and you can still have your Jack Daniels and your great goose and your head and your babies. You can still have all of that. You can still worship God and you can still masturbate. I remember one time I was I was going to I was going to a church and I saw this lady and the way she worshipped. The way she worshiped, my wife is laughing because we, she knows that exactly who talk about. When the way this lady worship, you can be slain in the spirit from watching her worship. But she's so far from God. She's so far from God. She she she's just has a raise and she's really in the group, uh, but she's too, she's still so far from God. I know what I'm talking about because Apostle warned me about this about this lady. No, I wasn't even talking to her to start me. But I got the warning. I want to put your put your hands, just wave your hands, and you'll be warned by our apostle. If, 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 if you'll be warned, if you if you, if you have to be warned by our apostle, I mean some people are too shy. Some people are really really. I, I like how Maria is doing it up here. She's really she's really be warned. So they have this lady. And she called me one day, she said, 
I was in for the blessing. There's this man of this car park out front of my house, and he's just parked there, and this taxi car is just tearing at me. I'm so afraid. I said, ah, oh, go and lock up your house. Make sure you lock up your house properly, and call me back as soon as you lock up the house. She called me back, but the last time I just locked up the house. I said, fine. Oh, uh, if anything, call the police, let me know what is going on. Oh, man. Five minutes later, she called me back again. I said, what's the problem? Are your children in and all that? She said, I don't know, I don't know, but I'm still, I'm still scared. I said, go and just lock up the house properly. Don't worry about it. Five minutes later, she called me again. I heard someone outside the house. I thought it was you. I made a day for you, but I went to the house. I thought it was you. I thought it was you. The devil is alive. You're waving your hand. You're waving your hand in church. People look at you think that you are serving God. But what she was doing was she was laying a trap for me. She was trying to make me feel that she was so concerned and so worried about her appearance. That I would walk there and she, she thought that the knocking that she heard was me trying to die. Ah, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. I'm talking about how people can get in you. You're worshiping God or you're worshiping God in the same Egypt. You're still in that same place. You have not been delivered. You can remain oppressed. That's what the enemy is saying. Where do you want to go for? You can worship me here this evening. You can worship me here this evening. Yes. You can remain oppressed. You can remain in Egypt. You can remain a gospel. You can remain an addict. Let's go to Exodus 10, verse 8 and 11. He slid his move again. Then Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh. Go and worship the Lord your God, he says. But tell me, who will be going? Hmm. Tell me who will be going. <laughs> Goes down to verse 10, he says, You will go with your young and your old. Verse, that's verse 9. You will. Moses answered, We will go with our young and our old, with our sons and our daughters, with our flock and herd, because we are to celebrate a festival to the Lord. Pharaoh said, the Lord will be with you if I let you go. And then he says, no. Have only the men go and worship the Lord. Listen to this part. Since that is what you've been asking for. Hmm. Moses never asked for that. But you see, the enemy comes and it's a deal. Oh, I will let you go, but Leave the leave the children now, or leave the the daughters, leave, leave, leave the women, leave the young young ones, and that's what our apostle was talking about. Because the enemy wants the younger generation. He wants the mothers. He knows really has the mothers, and he has the womb, and he has those that uh, that produce the next generation. Uh, I don't have to worry if they're bound up. Uh, you go one side, and these men are so foolish that they just go one side and they leave the children and leave the women and don't care about the well-being of the children and the well-being of the women. And they don't know, oh my Lord, I want to even touch on something further. Oh, you know, uh, the most beautiful thing is when fathers are praying, and mothers are praying, and daughters are praying, and sons are praying. Oh, my Lord, when everybody's praying and serving God, it is the most glorious thing. But if the enemy can bring a separation, if he can get the men, see the men are still pointing like this, all these men are supposed to minister, and all this sort of thing, and all this sort of thing, and the enemy is still destroying families. Let's go to Exodus 10. <laughs> 21 to 26. The Lord said, let's go to the 24. Go and worship. You can even carry the women now, but leave the livestock. So this is where one has a close tonight. The enemy wants you to leave your worship. You can go on high, but if you can have your worship, if the enemy can give you a situation where you don't praise God anymore, you pick up your glasses. 
If you can give you a situation where you are so bound, if you can attack your finances that place, where you can't worship God anymore. I watched uh, this, this, a deliberate session where the enemy says, I cause all of her money to dwindle. I've caused everything that she tried to touch, I destroyed it. The enemy would even say, I have her, I have her whole family, and there's nothing that they can do about it. You've ever heard that in here? The enemy sometimes make you feel like, 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 if I can have this, for, I heard it, a demon speak one time. And the demon said, I gotta pray. She's always praying. She prays to God, but she's always praying. I've got in that place, but she's always praying. What she's doing now, she's praying. What she's doing now, she's depressed. That's where the enemy wants to get people. Where you can't worship anymore. But, but Moses said, you can't have any. You can't have any part of what belongs to God. Are we there tonight? Maybe we will tell Satan, you can't have any part that belongs to me. I want to just close by giving these two scriptures. Ezekiel 30, 21 and 22. Son of man, you are this powerful ministry. Son of man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. It has not been bound up to be healed or put in a splint so that it may become strong enough to hold a sword. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I'm against Pharaoh, king of Egypt. I will break both his arms, the good arm as well as the broken one, and make the sword fall from his hand. I want to just prophesy that over you today. That he has broken the arm of Pharaoh. There's deliverance for every single person. Let's look at Hebrews 7, 24 to 26. Because Jesus lives forever, he is a permanent high priest. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who would come to God. I want us to not overlook this scripture. Because God, Jesus is able to save completely. I want to close by letting you understand the power and the sacrifice. Because we've, got, we've been through all the scriptures. And Pharaoh was still saying, I'm not going to let these people go. And God says, get them to kill the lamb. Get them to put it on the doorposts, the top and on the sides of the doorposts. And I'm going to pass through there in a few days. I'm going to pass through. Let them take a lap. Let them search it over for 14 days. If there's a big family, you can have a lamb. If it's a small family, divide the lamb between the two. Don't have to be, you know, a lot of people, God, God is not a God, but basically, you know. And, and we're going to search and make sure it's an unblemished lamb. I'm going to pass through that place. What I like about this scripture, and it only cited me to me today. The Bible says that they bankrupt Egypt. They bankrupt Egypt. That's what God wants us to do. They bankrupt Egypt. They went and knocked on the women's door. The women brought out the silver. The Egyptian women brought out the silver, the gold. The best dresses that they had. I just put it there. God wants us to bankrupt the enemy. God wants that to be a total separation. I realize that when when they were telling them to, to, to make the straw, make the, 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 the personal straw, they were saving resources for this time. Sometimes the hardship that you go through, right? Oh, the enemy is saving up resources and money for you. And it's the best, it's the best investment that can ever happen. I don't know about you, but sometimes you go through a situation and it seems to be so hard. But oh my Lord, when the enemy thought that he was stealing from you, it was an investment that he was stealing, he was making for you. He had put it in a, in a high yield deposit. I don't know about you, but it returned a hundredfold. Oh yeah, you could have been better yourself. But through the tears, it was not. They were saving up something for 
It must be a separate, it must be distinct. I'm not letting you have a one little child. I'm not letting you have nothing that belongs to me, nothing that God has given me, no resource that God has given me, nothing that God has given me. I'm not letting you have one. If God has given you help, you're not having my help. If God has given me a walk, you're not having my You know there's some people that are out there, they're talking, they talk now, and they're rocking all that. And when they come to God, they can't see what you the enemy has your voice, but the enemy has it. So we have to get total deliverance. Total deliverance. Moses said, not one who should be left behind. Be a part of this. This is a major divorce here. More than that, I'm bankrupting you everything that the Father has for me. I'm taking out, I'm cleaning you out, I'm cleaning you out. Hallelujah. I just want to close by this because I want us to get this. God had killed the animals belonging to Pharaoh. And here it is that Pharaoh is going to make a deal. Leave the animals. Nothing that God has given me, I'm giving to you. That must be our statement. Nothing that God, sometimes we, we go back to this man because he's being direct. We are, we, we, uh, uh, he's paid already, he'll have to be good, so I can, uh, he's like, I let Brown know, so I can go and have a little sex with him and come back. He's paid already, he's paid already good, uh, so I, I'm going to do that. Oh, so, uh, things were so hard with me before, but oh, my, my son is on a trust, but he's bringing money real good, but the, uh, it can't work with God. And God is saying there must be a total separation tonight. Are you with me tonight? Do you understand what God is saying to us tonight? Moses said, not one hoof is to be left behind. Would you just stand to your feet? God wants families to be liberated. We are only liberated when we come clean before God. When we understand that we are in need of a deliverer. We need deliverance. And the way we think, the way we act. Sometimes we think that we are on fire for God and we are going, we, 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 can, sometimes we can see everything about another person, but not ourselves. And that's the deception that the enemy uses. But tonight, I want us all to raise our hands. I want us all to pray out to God as as our sister Tiffany comes, I want us all to surrender to God. Because the enemy can't have any part of us, any part of our lives, any part of our family. We must come to a stage where we see the enemy attacking us. We say that there must be something special about me that I am not going to let the enemy get the upper hand over me. I'm defending everything that God has given me. And there must be a distinction. What has been purchased by the blood of God, the blood of Jesus is mine. What God has given me is mine. I'm not leaving anything behind. I'm going to hand over to her. Sister Tiffany, now I just want you to put your hands together and start to bless God. Just start to praise God. Just start to praise God. Thank you. 
name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power.
here tonight and you want to go deeper in God and you want chains to be broken tonight, they're really broken tonight. If you would just cry out tonight, and I, I want to invite you to just come a little bit closer. Because as our apostle was talking about, about judgment and, and, and what's done, it's important to make sure that the enemy has no hold on you. It's just important tonight for you to make sure that uh, your family, uh, what God has given to you is secure and covered under the blood of Jesus. It's important tonight to know that the enemy has no hold on what God has given unto you. It's important tonight to know that the enemy does not have you on a leash. But he allows you to go so far knowing that you still have to come back to the pit, the saint, the monk. Would you just raise your hand? In the presence of the Lord. Moses said, It must be three days' journey. I can't worship in the same place. I have to be as far as possible from this place because I know there's a place that God calls me to be, where He wants to commune with me, where I can worship Him without any hindrances. I can't worship Him. But I'm a priest. Would you just raise your hand and just wave it in the presence of the Lord tonight? Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, just praise it tonight. Just praise it tonight. Oh, give him some unusual worship tonight. Oh, give him a deep worship tonight. Pray out to him tonight. He knows every sin that you're going through, every situation that you're going through tonight. Oh, he's here, he's here, he's come down. He's come down to deliver you tonight. He's come down to, to break patterns, to, to leave you out victorious tonight. Everything, everything, everything he wants to suffer. He wants to cut you clean. Clean, clean, clean. Would you just surrender? Will you ready to surrender to him? Are we to pray up to him tonight? This is a place of abuse tonight. Oh, but we want God. We want God to cause it to perish.
the Lord from us. I want to end by just saying to you as before I go and over to us. Seek deliverance in every way. Every way. Oh, if your thinking is messed up, see God. If you find that you're in and out, if you find that you have no swings, if you find that you're tired for no reason, see God. If you find that you're trying things and it seems laborious, the grace of God is there to make what you're going through easy. If you find that you're going around in a circle, seek deliverance. Cry out to God. Don't take it for granted. Don't say, my grandmother was like this man, my great-grandmother was like that. Say, hey, sir, I cut it off the night. I cut it off the night in the name of Jesus. It will not go down to my children. Oh, it will not go down to, it will not go, it will, I suffer it tonight. I cut it off tonight. Oh, I keep it in the realm of the spirit tonight. Say that you will not have my generation. You will not have my resources. You will not have my home. You will not have my peace. You will not have us. Just praise and just open your mouth and give it the loudest praise in this house. Just open your mouth and give it the loudest praise. And you see yourself coming up victoriously. And you see yourself coming up with the spoils of the enemy. I don't want to clap your hands up. And you see uh, the generation behind you. Lord, we thank God I've given you. And you see yourself coming up victoriously. Uh, Save the loss at any cost, family. We pray God's divine power and elevation in your situation. Whatever you're going through, He's here to break yours. He's here to set the captive free. He wants to free you from everything that you're going through, wherever you're preaching. And He's here to do it tonight. I want you to just put your hands together and bless God. So we're going to say happy birthday for Minister Walker. And I want you to just stretch your hands to her and we're really going to thank God for her and lift her up. Uh, she's truly a blessing to this ministry. So, yeah. so. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. May the good Lord bless 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 you.
So let us come and get ready to bless God, put a smile on our face. It doesn't matter what you are going through, it doesn't matter who says what. What matters is that God is still on the throne. He's still interested in your well being and your fears. And He's still a provider, He's still a source. He's still your present help in times of trouble. So I want us to just stand and get ready to bless God. for what you've done in our lives, dear God, and you have given us the ability to earn money, dear God, and we've given it back to you. Father, cause it to multiply, dear God, let it be earned with you. Continue to make save the loss at any cost of deacon, dear God, where our lost souls can come to know you. We thank you for every single person represented here, dear God, and we pray that this money will be spent to the honor and glory of thy name. Just put your hands together and thank God for what he's already done and what he will continue to do in your life. Amen and amen. So we thank God for you who are here tonight. I just want you to turn to someone, turn to the person that's you and settle that God wants you to be delivered so that you can deliver someone else. My, my, my friend there in the great talk, this lady here, this is not the first time that you, this lady here, this is not the first time that you're here. We always want to make sure that whoever is in this house they get the opportunity to receive from God. So I thank God for you tonight. I thank God for all of you who came out. I I, I really salute you, Sister Nadia's husband. We thank you. We thank God for you. Put your hands together for him. I really like what God is doing in your family. And as the word today, we're not leaving anything on the table. We're taking back everything that he has stolen. We make a cut. What belongs to God, we're going to give him, we're going to give God honor and glory. We're going to praise him with every fiber of our being. So we thank God for you tonight. Happy Father, tonight I thank you for your people. We thank you for our apostles. We thank you for this powerful ministry. We thank you for this word that go forth. We thank God for those who are tuning in, those from Canada, those from the Caribbean, those from the United States, say God. Lord, I pray that you will continue to bless them and keep them. For those who are in this house tonight, we thank you for what you have done tonight. We thank you for the word. We thank you for your people, say God. We thank you for even now causing them to, to flourish and grow, dear God. Lord, I pray that this word will bring full fruit in their life. Father, as they depart from here, we know that they're not leaving your presence, but dear God, take them home safely. We pray the blood of Jesus upon every vehicle and every person here, dear God. We saturate them from the crown of their head to the sole of your feet, dear God, or the, or to the sole of their feet. We thank you for what you're doing in their lives, dear God. We thank you and may you continue to bless them all. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. As you leave, give someone a high five. Thank God for them tonight. Thank God for someone. Give someone a shake somebody's hand. Just encourage them in the Lord tonight. Amen. <laughs> world. 
I want to thank you so much, all of you that are watching us from all around the world. I appreciate you. And I pray that you enjoy every one of our services. Our service times and dates are all on the screen. May you continue to be empowered by the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. I see you.